Good day, folks, and welcome to the IT way. My name is Joanne, and today, if you are with me, it's because you are really interested to know more about the Cisco Meraki portfolio. So this is the place. This is one of many videos that I have in my portal that is here in the link in the description below, where you can find the Cisco Meraki exam certification blueprint. I'm gonna have a lot of information inside of each element that goes to the blueprint. And this is for you if you want to prepare for as a complementary knowledge for the exam, or if you're looking to know everything about Meraki from zero to hero. If you like this video and want to know more, you can go to the description below. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and see you the next one. Now that we know the main aspects of the SD1 network, let's take a look to see what are the SD1 technologies that is gonna help you to achieve what we mentioned before, everything being software defined and you don't have to manually make any changes afterwards. So here we're gonna have the same structure, the same topology that we mentioned before, the one network with the elements inside. So what kind of elements do you have here? The wireless one, the internet, and the private MPLS. So you're gonna have the same outbreaks in the branch office. And you're gonna have your router or router here that is gonna connect with the three different elements, right? To make it software defined, there are different elements, but we can see these four here that we can explain a little bit in this video. So we can talk about the first one, dual active VPN uplinks. So in this case, let's say that what you have here is another router or router, and you want to do is, let's put in another color so we can see it better. What you want to do is a VPN tunnel going from the branch office to the data center. So all the traffic is going to be encrypted. That VPN tunnel can go either through the wireless LAN, through the internet, or through the private MPLS link. And then that software defined network is going to make it happen. But at the end, essentially, what you want is a VPN tunnel. So with a dual active VPN, this one, what it's gonna do is you can have, let's say dual, you're gonna have an active VPN tunnel coming through here. Let's say it's gonna go here and it's gonna go here. So that's your VPN tunnel. And then you can have as well at the same time, one from the wireless one through here to the data center. And the, both tunnels are gonna be active. So with that, you have higher redundancy, and then you can make clever adjustments saying if this wireless one, the latency, the cheater, the packet loss, or any specific principle that you want to say that it's very important for that traffic, it's increase or decrease. Okay, let's start using the other VPN tunnel more often. And then you can create this kind of ratio based on the load that you wanna balance between the two active VPN uplinks. That's one part. Another part that you can do is policy-based routing. What, what that means is now, since you manage this router or router, depending on the sending through the different elements to the one network, to the cloud services, to the data center, you know what traffic that is. So you can set the policy saying, if that is the traffic that I'm counting out, let's use just the internet link. Let's say if you have Workday, you have Salesforce, or you have Office 365 and says, the best way to go through the, this cloud service here, the 365, is going through the internet. So all that traffic, make sure that it goes through the internet link only all the time. That's a policy and it's based in the routing that you select. The same thing you say, well, all the traffic that I know that is coming from my guests, I want them to use just the wireless one all the time, regardless of the perform performance of that wireless LAN. So you make a decision, a policy based on these different elements that you have in the one. So that's how you can make adjustments and you don't have to be there and manually change anything. After that, we have dynamic path selection. So what does that mean? It means that cleverly, this device now can sense everything and says, first, what I want to do is for this kind of traffic, let's say the traffic from my application, the application that they use in the branch office, I wanted to use the internet, but if the internet is not good enough based on my parameters, I wanted to use the wireless one because I'm reserving the private MPLS for something else. But then if these two are not good enough, okay, let's use and spend the private MPLS for that traffic. And you can do it for that app, let's say app one, but then you have another app, app two, and it could be different. 
before we said this is the first one, this is the second, and this is the third. For the app two, it says no, this is my most important app, and I know that has to go through the MPLS first. So you put it through the MPLS first. If something happens with the MPLS, it's not good enough based on my parameters. Let's move it through the internet. And if that's not good enough, or you can balance it out after the MPLS is down, or it's not good enough, balance it out between the wireless one and the internet. So this is dynamic path selection that you can have now in the configuration inside of the router without you making any additional changes at the moment when that happens. You can create those uh, performance probes, which is what we're going to talk now. And then based on those results of the performance probes, then you can, the device itself is going to make all the adjustments and the changes. So what are those performance probes? Since you have this device here and you have this device here, you can make different probes. Uh, it depends on what kind of information you want to receive on. But let's say pins, which is one of the most, most common. So you're going to send pins to a specific IP address through here. You're going to send pins to a specific IP address through here. And you're going to send pins to a specific IP address through here. I'm going to receive the return. And that is going to give you latency, packet loss, jitter. Whatever you want to have it, you can have it with different elements of the probes. Um, there are people that make different ways to approach on that, but at least what you need is the outcome, what you want to achieve from that. When you say that based of the latency of the jitter or the packet loss, this application from the internet needs to move to the wireless one. So you make those performance proofs and then you can make this classification saying this is good enough for me and below that threshold is not good enough and above that threshold is good enough. So if that goes below this threshold, let's move it to another link. Let's move it to the wireless one. And the same situation you can make with the app too. We say that the first is the MPLS, right? And then you send the pins and say, okay, if there is 2% packet loss in this specific link, for me, that's the threshold. If it's above 2%, move it to the internet side. If it's below 2%, you can keep it the MPLS. So here you can see all the changes at the same time. You see the performance probes that you're going to do all the time to send that information and get the, the output that you want. The dynamic path selection, depending on what is better. The policy base, depending on what you want to have, you can create a policy and then route the traffic based on that. And you have the dual active VPN uplinks to ensure that you have at least more than one active VPN if you want to balance it out or send traffic from one place to another. So these are the four main aspects that you can say in the SD-1 technologies that we have for SD-1 network.